Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I want to talk to you about animal testing and cosmetics. First, let me start by saying that making a claim on personal care these days of no animal testing is about as effective as saying gluten-free milk. That making a claim on personal care these days of no animal testing is about as effective as saying gluten-free milk. That's right, there is no gluten in milk and we don't test our finished products on animals either. In fact, most countries around the world now have a ban on animal testing, which means products cannot be manufactured or imported into their country where there is a ban on animal testing for cosmetic products. Countries such as the EU, India, Israel, New Zealand, Turkey, the UK, Norway, Sao Paulo in Brazil, Australia, South Korea and Taiwan have all banned cosmetic products with animal testing. Other countries such as ASEAN countries, Brazil and the United States have bills underway or don't require animal testing. And Russia also has a bill underway to ban animal testing, while China is slowly banning animal testing on anything other than cosmeceutical products, which means they no longer require animal testing on shampoos, body washes and certain makeup. Other bills to ban animal testing also exist for Argentina, Canada, Colombia and Peru. That means that in about another year or so, we're going to find animal testing is banned almost around the globe. So we need to stop the rubbish, stop suggesting that cosmetic products are tested on animals because they have not been tested on animals in a very long time in most of your large and developed countries. Why is there this animal testing stigma in the first place? Let's have a look at a bit of the history of cosmetic ingredients. Back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, there was a lot of new chemicals being introduced and governments wanted to make sure that consumers are safe when using their cosmetic products. At the time, the best methods they had were to test these chemicals on animals. And finished products were also tested so they could evaluate things like dermal absorption and combination of chemicals. But we haven't done that in a very, very long time. In fact, the very few countries that still now require some animal testing as part of their regulations to allow cosmetics into the country only require it because of these grandfathered laws. But they're working very hard with companies to stop the need for animal testing as part of their import regulations by using alternative methods. The truth is most companies and most countries now accept in vitro testing. This in vitro testing is more reliable about how a cosmetic will perform on a human skin compared to conducting it on an animal test. It's more reproducible and it's less expensive. So why would you want to conduct a test on an animal when there's so many advocates out there against it when it's more expensive, less reproducible and less reliable anyway? As I mentioned, there's only a couple of countries that still require only very few tests to be conducted on animals, while the rest of the world doesn't require that testing and will accept these in vitro methods because of their reproducibility, reliability and they're much more cost efficient and they don't hurt the poor little bunny. I see misinformation on the internet about some of the big multinational companies still testing regularly on animals and it's just not true. I've put together some sites for references because I know you're not going to believe me at first glance, but your big companies like your L'Oreal and all their brands, Procter and Gamble and all their brands, Unilever and Clinique and all their brands will only conduct animal tests where it's absolutely required to export to a certain country. They are actually working with these countries to try and develop alternative methods and change their regulations so that they don't have to do animal testing anymore. But in the meantime, there's just a handful of countries that require very, very few tests. 
So it still happens, but it certainly isn't the company's choice. They'll avoid it wherever possible. Now you see so many little brands that don't export to these countries that talk about how the big companies conduct animal testing. And I've got to say, it's just not fair. These smaller brands aren't exporting to the countries where this very little bit of animal testing is required. The multinationals are exporting to those countries and that is the only reason why they'd ever conduct this testing. They don't want to fear the backlash of consumer advocates and they don't want to be doing the animal testing because it costs more anyway. But to export to some countries, they are still required to provide these results to get the product into the country. You may also be surprised to find out that most of the cosmetic chemicals that you use every day and many of the chemicals that are in so-called cruelty-free brands were once tested on animals. Yes, I'm going to pick all your common materials like cocomita propyl betaine, satyryl alcohol, sterile alcohol, behenol alcohol, your alcohol glucosides, caprolyl glucoside, your phenoxyethanol, your potassium sorbate, zinc oxide. Oh my goodness, the list just goes on. Even lavender oil has been tested on animals in the past. We don't do this testing anymore. In fact, we haven't done this testing for a very long time. So can we please stop the rubbish? There's no gluten in milk and we certainly don't test cosmetics on animals unless we absolutely have to. And in any case, we don't test finished products on animals in any of those countries that I've told you where it's banned. I've seen reports that ASEAN countries require it and other reports suggesting the US FDA insist on it. And this is not true either. Both of these nations require consumer products to be safe when used as directed. They encourage alternative test methods, but they do require the product that reaches the market to be safe when a consumer uses them. Which means if an animal test is required to prove that indefinitely, the company is required to do it. But with so many good alternative test methods nowadays, it's very rarely done if at all. So well done to those countries that have passed a ban on animal testing. At least we can then be sure that some of this ridiculousness about how everyday cosmetics are tested on animals routinely can be dealt with because it's simply not true. I'm looking forward to a few years time where the ban is pretty much global and we won't have to listen to our beautiful cosmetic products being downgraded by suggestions of animal testing when it's the last thing we want to be doing. And with so many alternative test methods, it's only done where we absolutely have to for a regulatory authority for a safety reason. If you can't tell, I'm pretty passionate about the misinformation that is out there on this topic. So please contact us for full references. I'm happy to provide them to you. It seems there's so much misinformation out there, the truth doesn't get heard. So please contact me and share this video with all of your friends that are concerned about so-called animal testing that doesn't happen. Go back and enjoy your milk because there's no gluten in that either. Please make sure you give this a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the content. Make sure you look at the references before you tell me it's not true because there's an overwhelming amount of evidence, if you know where to look, that backs up everything I've been talking about. Make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos and I look forward to bringing you some great formulas that haven't been tested on animals in the near future. Happy formulating!